back here with Professor George Aite, the author, of course, of Defeating Dictators, Fighting Tyranny in Africa and Around the World. What has been the reaction so far, generally, from those people sincerely who have actually read the book? No, oh, it's been, the uh, response has been very positive. Uh, positive, and I, I think anybody who uh, sort of uh, Googles the term defeating dictators on the, on the web, you know, can find some of the responses there. What about uh, some of these people who support people you call dictators? Well, some of them, of course, you know, <laughs> have been very, very critical, you know. Uh, some people have said, oh, how, how dare you add, you know, uh, uh, call uh, Kagame a dictator. And uh, th there's some people who also said that, you know, Museveni should not be on my list of dictators and so forth. Of course, they, you know, they have a different opinion, so. Why did you write this book when you did it? Because uh, it looks like uh, either it is a coincidence or, if not, very timely. Well, look, I have all along, I mean, I've been on your show several times, and I've all been, you know, you know railing against these dictators on your show. And I have, for a long time, uh, you know, been saying that, look, <coughs> the, <coughs> excuse me, the political systems that we have in Africa are just not un untenable unsustainable. You mm. seem to think that uh, when Africa got independence, beginning with their own country, yes. March 6, 1957, yeah. that actually what Ghana and Africa later got was probably what some have characterized as uh, political flag independence. Well, you know, um, let me describe your situation. National anthem, flags. Yeah, yeah we, did, we did that. But Symbolism, no substance. Well, look, uh, we had, uh, the way I, I want people to understand this is, it's like, you have a vehicle, mm -hmm. okay, and you have a driver, mm -hmm. okay? Now, in many, many, many countries, the vehicle is kaput. Right. Okay? Or the engine is knocked. Yeah, the, the, engine, uh, the vehicle is kaput. Since independence, all that we have been doing is we have been changing the driver without fixing the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Look, we inherited a colonial vehicle, okay? Now, that authoritarian colonial state okay, was repressive, extractive, okay, and it was authoritarian, so okay. So what you're saying now, is that what we, we did was, what we did after independence was we did not dismantle the authoritarian colonial state. All that we did was we, we repainted it. So we need structural change? We need structural change, and this is one of the reasons why I'm saying that the dictatorship, the cause of a dictatorship is really not, you know, cultural, it is systemic. But what we learned from some of these countries which obviously inherited that colonial template, okay. but they have used it very well and that's used what it I mean. for the benefits of their people. Uh, but that's what I mean. And in terms of, you know, if you look at, you know, the unitary state system, for example. Botswana is a unitary state. It is a unitary but state. it is working. Okay, but it's an, it's an exceptional case. Exceptions don't make the rules. You have Zambia. Okay, well, Zambia is, you know, well, we had, you know, a lot of, you know, problems with Zambia. You have Ghana? Well, we, we also had, you know, dictatorship in Gambia. We had you a string Mauritius? of, you know, military rule in, in Gambia. So did the West, somebody might tell you but, that so the West also had their own dictators? Well, uh, look, you know, out of the 54 African countries, how many success stories can we name? The success stories are fewer than 10. Okay, so there is something fundamentally wrong with the vehicle. Let me point out these. Is uh, it the vehicle, the is it, or is it in fact the individuals, frankly, who get the opportunity to occupy those positions? Well, no. It's a, for far too long we have been focusing on leadership. Remember what President Obama said when he came to Ghana? Africa doesn't need strong leaders. Africa needs strong institutions, institutions okay? Correct. So look at the institutions. It is the institutions which have been defective, and it is the institutions which create the bad leaders. If you have a political system that concentrates power at the center, that system, no matter where it is, would degenerate into tyranny. And this is what we've seen in many, many, many countries in post-colonial Africa. Look at the political system, the political system of unitary state system. If you go into traditional Africa, we didn't have that kind of systems. But in fairness to your argument, someone will come back and say, wait a minute, uh, George Aite. I mean, there are several countries on the African continent which really had what you would call decent systems, really, or institutions for that matter but they have been taken advantage of by individuals who became heads of state in those countries and actually went on perhaps to weaken them. Uganda is an example. You remember when there was Makerere University, for yes, example? Yes, yes. You remember the Ugandan civil service? Yes. What happened? Well, this is what happens, okay? You have 
The first defect, unitary statism. The second defect, Western are multi-party elections. We have liberating parties, okay, like the CPP in Ghana, the ANC in uh, South Africa, the ZANU uh, PF in Zimbabwe. They win, okay, they, they win huge parliamentary majorities. And guess what they do? They use the parliamentary majorities to subvert the constitution. Okay, CCM in Tanzania, for example. Why do you call it subverting the constitution? If they have a majority which has actually been democratically elected. Fine. Don't fine. they have a right? Fine. Don't they have a right to change policies? But you see, they use the constitution, they change the constitution to declare their countries to be a one-party state and outlaw all opposition. Was that fair? So it wasn't it, fair. So what you are saying so basically is, is that uh, they use the law to undermine democracy. Precisely, okay? And that is why one man, one vote came to many African country, uh, countries one time. Although because they, you know, they, when they change the constitution, declare their countries to be one party states, and then themselves presidents for life. Although, of course, uh, with South Africa, between you and me, we have to agree that uh, at least they do have a slightly better system in the sense that it is a proportional representation. Hopefully, okay, if hmm? they get there. Yes, it is okay, not one man. It, it is not one one man. You know, you know, take but it all. And we stuff like didn't it. have that in many many African countries, especially in West Africa, which was why one of the reasons why in the 1970s we had a rush of military coups, okay, to sweep away all these, you know, uh, first of all, you know, African nationalist heroes like, you know, Nkrumah, for example, uh, swept out of office, okay? But then the military rulers who came, they were worse, okay? So in other ways, in... in, in of course, you're Oh, yes, you know, we've had, you know, one cycle of betrayal after betrayal after betrayal. And let's get this. No African should tolerate dictatorship because dictators have caused so much trouble, so much wreck, so much havoc on Africa. But All the collapsed states in Africa but have Brigadier, been caused by dictators. Brigadier,